Hello everyone, this is a video about one of my favorite edtech tools called Canva. And Canva is a free website where you can create tons of different things. In this case, I'm going to talk specifically about how do you go about creating an infographic uh, using all of the different tools that Canva has to offer. So to get started, you're going to go to canva.com and then create an account. I'm already in my account here. You can just use a Gmail account. Um, you can, I think, log in with various different things. But once you are in, it's kind of daunting because you're going to get all of these different pop-ups if you've never logged into Canva asking you, like, what are you interested in creating? Because they're, they're trying to direct you as far as how to navigate this giant site. You can just X out of most of those things um, as far as the pop-ups and then get to a page that looks similar to this. Now, yours will look different because... Canva customizes its interface page here, depending upon what you've already created as far as on their site. So here you can see some designs that I've already made here, including the one that I'm going to talk about. How did I go about making this? This was an infographic, uh, specifically in an English language arts class. I'm making it full size here. And it's got a lot of different components to it. Um, and it is actually really super easy to go ahead and make something like this. Uh, there's a lot of different things that Canva offers um, that are great for inputting images, for inputting, in this case, like quotes, the different fonts and different uh, stylistic choices that they make are all part of, of uh, what Canva has to offer for anyone that's trying to design anything. In this case, an infographic that has to do with the problem solution, the really the way that I started was I typed in, and you can even see my former search here, I typed in problem solution here. And I said, show me things that are problem solution charts. And it showed me a lot of different things that reminded me of things you might see in a science class or a math class. And they, these are great. I mean, there's some some specific ones even that you can see here were problems and solutions and kind of some different uh, templates that you can go ahead and use. I didn't really want to stick with any of these. And I highly recommend that for what you are working on and you're designing your own poster, you just use these templates, these the templates that they offer for their color schemes and their sizes. So I wanted something that was kind of rectangular. So I ended up choosing this thing over here, this problem and solution chart. I'm going to go ahead and click on it and kind of show you, walk you through my process of what I ended up doing. What I didn't want to do, because I thought it would look horrible and it would be boring, is have these components here, where it had like the date here and these different things, the goals and the problems. I started going through and just selecting them and then trashing them. You can see the little delete button here. And I just started selecting all kinds of things and just getting rid of them. Highly recommend you do the exact same thing. So it doesn't matter which, which ones of these you decide to go ahead and choose. It, use it as the template that's already there, but then go ahead and take out the things that look very static. Um, as you can see here, I took out a lot of things. Um, I even changed the way that the fonts even looked. I changed uh, almost everything except for the kind of the color scheme. One of the things that I do love about Canva is that it offers you the ability to um, it, it picks for you the, the colors that belong together. So that's really nice when you're designing uh, different aspects here. So anyway, I went through, deleted all of these things. Let's go back to the completed one so we can kind of see here. I'm going to select one of the features here is it's already at 87%. You can see on the bottom here, I'm going to select 100%. So just we can get a better look here. and You can even zoom in further to be able to go in and select some things. So some changes that I made that you can already see. Uh, this font didn't belong to the fonts that were there. How did I choose it? Super easy. You can select anything. So I selected this thing and it looks like it's League Spartan. I didn't like the way that that looked. And look at all of the different fonts that Canva has to offer. And you can go ahead and experiment with these. Once you choose one of the fonts, what's really cool is that uh, Canva remembers what fonts you've been using. It puts them towards the top. So it knows, hey, you've already used this thing. So I use this playlist script because I like the way that it looked. So it kept, it keeps track of those things when I end up trying to select whatever types of things I'm, I'm working on here. So super easy to go ahead and change the fonts. 
and the sizes of the fonts, like you would expect to be able to do those things. What I would do is make sure you have a nice title there that is easy to be able, to, uh, easily uh, readable by uh, whoever's your audience. Um, in this case, we needed a definition uh, that went with the title here that was pulled specifically from a uh, paper, a problem solution paper. Um, and then we have basically, I separated this into three components because it made sense to have a problem kind of component who would actually affects this problem and then some solutions i also wanted to make sure that i included as part of the components of the requirement sorry of the problem solution uh, infographic were that i needed some quotes so i pulled those specifically or write directly from the paper itself or in this case on this one it was kind of a paraphrase of something that occurred inside of the paper itself but you notice there's not a lot of there's not a lot of text here. There's the title, there's this definition, there's these three categories here, but there's not a lot of text. And that's what we want in an infographic. You don't want a lot of text, but you want your um, the pictures that you choose to be accurate portrayals of like what are you actually talking about, if that makes any sense. So one of the super cool things, and let's go back to this part here, is that all of this stuff is you can manipulate any of these things here and for example there's these kind of um, uh, image or little uh, placeholders here i guess is a good way of describing it and you notice that what i did here is on some of these placeholders i actually threw in an image in there and that's super easy to do that's one of the first things that you can go ahead and do is manipulate these by throwing them images i'm going to click on photos and canva has a ton of photos that you can go ahead and choose from some of them are free as you can see i hovered over things and it says free here but some of them do cost money so just be aware of that you know as you actually do that so let's say i use this one on my meditation one or thing and i could just drag and drop it right into any space that's already there kind of a placeholder and i could also manipulate that here and be able to move that to place uh, sorry, that image there. And we could do way more to this. You can see I can even rotate that image itself if I wanted to, to make sure that it appeared however it is that I wanted to, it to go ahead and appear. That one looks kind of weird, but it's just for your example there. So you can kind of see what's happening here. Any of these images, by the way, I can just click on them and they just appear right onto Canva, which is fantastic. But some of the time we're like, okay, talk about images themselves. We don't want just an image. We want it to bring like have some flair to it so for example can you see these these different images here let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit here to 200 percent let's scroll down a little bit and take a look at these these kind of look like paint swatches like a paintbrush kind of went over here and i threw the images into those those are super easy to do and they are called um they are called frames they are called frames and anyway i can go search here we have uploads we can upload any picture we want and i highly recommend that if you don't find a photo here in canva just bring one in um, i'll show you a site that i use all the time to get high quality pictures of course there's the photos here's all the different photos you can choose from you can search them uh, make sure that they don't have a little dollar sign beside them or otherwise you have to pay for them then the third thing is called elements and it says hey glenn you already used some of these elements this was one of the ones that I used for these paint swatches here. So it's super cool. I can just click on it and it throws that into here. And let's come back out a little bit. And then we have this kind of template that you can drag a photo right into. So very, very easy to go ahead and do. Let's drag this one in here. And we kind of drag and drop it right into those areas. And you notice it just went right in there. And because it's in there now, I can resize it and then place it wherever I want. Again, these are under elements. And if I type in the word frame, you can see, look at all these different cool ways of being able to organize images. I did that for this picture here, these obviously, even this one with multiple images. I think it's this one right here. These were really nice ones because they had a little bit of a frame to them and they were nice size. And you can see there's some different elements here. Highly recommend using all of these or any of these sorry in combination with each other as you start creating your infographic i'm going to go ahead and delete that one and delete this super easy to go ahead and use drag and drop them right into there or you click on them and they appear here like this and then you choose an image that you want to drag into there and you just drag and drop it right into the the uh 
a frame, sorry. Um, so talking about photos, if you don't find the photo, there's, there's a limited amount of photos that they actually have there as far as on Canva. There's a site called Pixabay, and there is tons of free images that you can go ahead and use, um, and they are royalty free. So fantastic looking, high quality images, you can download them. And then if you have the image, so for example, let's do this cat here. And I really like this cat. So I would go free download and I choose a size. I'm just going to choose a smaller size um, and it, it'll download it into my downloads here. And then I can literally come back to Canva here. Let's choose this one and I can drag and drop it right into what they, it, it automatically selects. You see up here where it says uploads and now the little cat is actually there already. So this is really, really easy to be able to manipulate as far as get images, drag and drop them into there, whatever you wanna do. And here's all your different images here that you may be using, maybe working with. Cool, all right. So that's basically how you go about using the frames you're inputting or inputting images. As I look at this thing, there's a couple of different elements here too. And I, I can go back to my elements. And I'm gonna X out of this thing so I can kind of see some things that I've, I've worked with in the past. There's all kinds of little different, um, I would call them uh, clip art type of images that you can go ahead and throw in. Some of them are the, the frames that I used for uh, being able to put quotes into. I actually typed the word quote in here. Let me show you. And then it brought me all kinds of different things. The, really what I wanted was kind of one of these types of quote things. And I ended up finding one that I could go ahead and add some uh, things. This one was actually one of the gifts that you could go ahead and use um, to put my quotes right back into. But there's tons of images here. Um, you know, you can just kind of search through some of these things and some of them you might be able to find a specific thing that you that you want, okay? Um, same thing goes for as far as in the elements. This types of things, these borders that I'm using here, were literally part of a set of different lines that you could go ahead and choose from. So I think I chose, there were some lines that looked like this. So originally the lines looked like this. So you see they look a little different than what they ended up here. And then I just went through and I chose like a color scheme that looked good as far as with the rest of the colors here. How did I do that? I selected this and then I select the colors inside. And you notice that it shows me the colors that are part of my document colors or the photo colors. And these colors seem to fit really, really well with what I'm using as far as inside of my uh, infographic itself. I'm gonna just go ahead and delete that. So really a combination of uploading things from sites like Pixabay where it's legal to go ahead and do so using the photos that are already there inside of Canva, using elements like the frames that I showed you, or these little types of images that seem to fit with what you're working with here, and then changing the color scheme because everything is manipulable, uh, you can manipulate. Um, and then once you're done and you're like, okay, this looks really good, I have the elements there, there's some good images, but there's not too many images. When you're ready, you don't just share this link up here. You know, you can see this kind of link as far as the Canva. This is not, this doesn't work for anybody. You have to download this. So I'm gonna click download and look at my options. If I have any kind of GIFs in here, it's gonna suggest that I put an MP4 video. So just be careful with that. Select uh, the little drop down arrow, and then I would select a PNG or a high quality image and then you can just press download. It tells you, hey, remember that this PNG is not gonna be active. You know, once you download that, who cares? You can just download that, and then now you will have the image to go ahead and be ready to submit to Schoology. I know this is a longer video than I would anticipated, but really the best thing you can do, select a template, but don't use it as is. Change it and manipulate it, add images, use these little great frames that you can that are that are there for you change the fonts to fit your style, and then use the color schemes that are already there and available for you inside of Canva to create something awesome. If you have any questions, let me know.